Today we're going to continue our discussion of probability distributions by focusing on continuous distributions. So that is distributions that can take on a continuous outcome. And there are many examples of continuous outcomes. You could have an outcome in 0 to 1, or you could have an outcome 0 to positive infinity, or negative infinity to positive infinity. These are all continuous outcomes because they can take on any real value. So think of, for example, decimal point numbers. Mathematicians call the outcome space of continuous distributions uncountably infinite. And so this is to make a distinction between, say, the outcome space of a Poisson distribution, which is any number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, on out to infinity, and any decimal point number. And so you can count the natural numbers, even though there are infinitely many of them, but you cannot count all of the decimal point numbers. In some ways, discrete distributions were a little bit easier because for every possible outcome, you could assign a probability to it. And sometimes we did that with a function. We didn't just write it down in, say, a discrete distribution, but, for example, with the Poisson distribution, we had a formula that gave us the probability of any possible natural number. And we can't do that anymore because we have uncountably infinite outcomes. And so if you ask questions like, what is the probability of getting 12.5742, that doesn't make a lot of sense because there are infinitely many possible outcomes and the probability of any single decimal point expansion is going to be vanishingly small. In fact, you can mathematically prove that it's going to be zero, although we won't do that in this class. And this doesn't make a lot of sense. The probability of any outcome is zero. It's just that there are so many outcomes that the probability of exactly landing on an infinitely long decimal expansion is zero. As a result, we need to define what it means to have a probability distribution a little bit differently. So instead of answering the question, how probable is a particular event, what we're going to do instead is talk about density functions. And a probability density function is a function that gives you the probability of events happening within some range. And these probability density functions have a lot of the same properties that we talked about before. They're always greater than or equal to zero, and when you sum over them or integrate, in the case of continuous distributions, the probability has to sum or integrate to one. And even though if you evaluate the probability density function at a individual point, you will get a probability of zero, you can ask questions like, what is the probability of getting a value between, say, zero and one? This is a lot like discrete probability functions where we talked about unions and disjunctions. We'll, we'll see a little bit more of that in a second. But the way that you ask questions about probability density functions is through integrals. And so in this class, we won't actually be taking integrals directly. We'll be using formulas instead. But what you do is you have some density functions. You can integrate that to compute the probability of being less than some event, being greater than some event, or lying between two events. And the integral is basically telling you how far you need to go in the probability density function. Although we won't be taking integrals in this class, it's important to understand the intuition of what's going on here. So if you have some distribution and you want to ask a probability, that's going to be an integral. And the integral is the area under a curve. And so if you have some value a, and you want to know what is the probability of being greater than a, you take the integral of the curve for everything greater than a. So this corresponds to this first term here. And if you then want to know the probability between two values, that corresponds to an integral between two points. So if you want to know the probability of lying between a and b, that is the integral between those two points and taking all of the area under that curve. 
So as I said, we won't explicitly be taking integrals. We'll be looking up these probabilities using functions in Python, or tables on a sheet of paper. But it's important to understand this intuition, because we'll still be drawing these density functions, and you'll need to be able to understand what it means to look at a density function and see whether a particular outcome is likely to happen or not. And the way that you do that is comparing relative areas. And so if you have a probability density function that, say, has a long tail like that, and you look at various integrals, say, from A to B, or from C to D, the integral here is going to be much larger than the integral from C to D. So the integral from A to B has more mass under it, more density under it, than between C and D. So the, the outcomes here will be more probable. Don't be too scared of these integrals. This is exactly like what we were doing for discrete distributions. For example, when we took the role of a die and combined various outcomes together, that's exactly what's happening here. We're just using a different mathematical notation intuition than we were before. So, for example, if we take a roll of a single die, and we look at all of the outcomes greater than or equal to 3, that is exactly like taking an integral. So we take all of these values and add them together, and the total probability is the sum of all of these things together. And we can even think about this as an integral. So this is a rectangle whose height is 1 6, and the width is 4. So recall that computing the area of a rectangle is multiplying the width times the height. So this gives us a total probability of 4 sixths.